Beach United Methodist Church is more than just buildings. It's more than just a place to worship. Beach United Methodist Church is a community of people dedicated to living out the five God-given purposes of the church. Worship, fellowship, discipleship, ministry, and evangelism. We're seeking to do exactly what God has called us to do as His church, being able to share the good news of Christ's love with others. That's probably the greatest opportunity we have of all to make a difference. I feel excitement here at Beach United Methodist Church. I truly feel that uh, God has chosen this church to take the beaches for Christ and to uh, be salt and light in our community. Here at Beach, uh, it's about relationships. It's about knowing people and loving people and earning the respect to then share what you know about Christ with them. At Beach United Methodist, my church, your church, we're doing a baptism, a beach baptism. I think it's just so awesome. And every time if I tell my, my friends at work or um, neighbors and all about what we're doing, they just say, oh, I just get goosebumps all over because we're, we're doing a baptism, a beach baptism. It's kind of like Exodus. I mean, we're going to be, you know, closing off Third Street and people are going to be walking across and going, you know, four or five hundred people to be baptized. What a witness to this community that everyone will be able to see, yes, this church just cares so much and to, to be able to bring others to Christ. Beach is an incredible church with so many opportunities for service and ministries. Because really, we're all about people. Uh, the buildings are important, but uh, people are what we're all about. And these buildings and resources become the tools that God can help us to use in order to touch people's lives. The Bible teaches us that, that we should become debt-free. We should be debt-free in our families, in our personal situations as much as possible, and we should be debt-free as a church. And so it becomes incumbent upon us to try to manage and or eliminate that debt as quickly as we can because that frees us up. That kind of unbinds the chains from around us and frees us up to do the ministry to this community that I believe we're called to do. I don't believe that debt defines who you are as a church, but I believe that debt can very easily define whose you are as a church. And one of the things that we're called to um, as individuals, and I believe as a church, is to become free of, uh, of the lender, become free of the, the um, responsibilities that debt brings so that we can not only carry out what Christ has called us to do, but so that we can become free and uh, open to what Christ will call us to do in the future. God has truly blessed our church. In His divine plan, He is leading people to beach in large numbers. He is blessing us with the opportunity to touch lives of thousands of people our challenge is that our opportunities exceed our facility space and our parking capacity. Today we're called to ensure that our present and future facilities development and our ministries are carried out faithfully. That present and future generations of people will come to know Christ and become fully devoted followers, impacting their world for the sake of the kingdom. Before we take care of anything else, we have to take care of our ministries to ensure that we're doing God's work. And then, to be able to use our resources to direct them toward the development of our facilities so that we can ensure, not only today, but in the years to come, that there'll be a place for everyone that God draws into the ministry of this church. Make no doubt about it, this is a God-sized vision. 
And I'm sure there'll be people that will think this is too big or maybe too bold. And yet as I look through scripture every time God calls people to God-sized challenges, it requires sacrifice and personal investment. And I believe that's exactly what God's calling us to today, is the opportunity to truly step up to the plate and make a difference. Paul addresses the church in 2 Corinthians. Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will reap generously. Each person should give what he has decided to give. Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase the harvest of your righteousness. Paul is not talking to people about trying to get rich. He was simply explaining how God wants faithful men and women to leverage their resources in order to advance God's kingdom. Giving to God's work is not giving something away. It is an investment that God will use to provide a harvest for his kingdom. There are many ways that we can share and invest our resources for ministry and for the continued development of our facilities. Each individual or family should seek God's direction on how they can give. In the last capital campaign, my husband and I prayed together. We were encouraged to pray together about what God would have us give to Beach in the, in the, uh, in the campaign. And as we prayed, God um, laid it on our hearts that we need to pray individually and then come together and share with each other what God had given us. And we both um, felt like we were being led to give more than what we had initially said, but we're a little chicken to share that with each other. So as we talked and shared, um, God kept increasing that number and increasing that number and increasing that number. And then um, I don't remember exactly where the statement was given, but it was in one of the sermons during the campaign. We were challenged to sacrifice, not equal giving, but equal sacrifice. And so my husband and I went home again and we began to pray again. And uh, we were challenged to look at what individually we could sacrifice. And for me, that meant sacrificing a woman that came into our home every two weeks and cleaned our home. And I was um, you know, challenged by God, sacrifice that, sacrifice that amount of money, and I will bring, you know, bring to you more than what you've sacrificed. And he did. Today, the choice is ours. To what extent will we, as followers of Christ, give of our lives and resources to see this vision to reality? Today we are called to sacrificially leverage our resources that we might continue to do what we've always done, make room for others. A few years ago, uh, during the building campaign, uh, my wife and I made a decision of a pledge ahead of time and we got to church and, and we prayed and, and, and we put our campaign pledge on the altar but I didn't end up leaving it at the altar. I ended up picking that back up and I took it back and I sat down in the chair with my wife and I said you know we talk I'm 66 years old I'm thinking um, it's about time to maybe see a few more of my grandkids' soccer games. But we've got a fire in this church, and we can't see that fire extinguished. And I said, except for a little bit of a bad back, and except for a little arthritis, I'm good to work for three more years for Jesus Christ and to see this church continue and this fire continue. I drew a line through that original pledge and raised it substantially. You and I have the wonderful opportunity 
to experience the legacy of people that have gone before us that uh, made sacrificial gifts and envisioned what this day would be like. And now it's our opportunity as God works and moves in our lives uh, to make a difference and to build a legacy for future generations to come. God not only wants us to serve Him here today, He also wants us to hand off the baton so that we can enable others who come after us to still be a vital, life-giving presence here in the life of this community for Christ. Beach United Methodist, it's about real life, real people, real church.